Oh, class, today we're going to talk about using logical reasoning. We're going to have to solve problems. Two kinds of reasonings we can use here. We're going to use inductive reasoning and we're going to use deductive reasoning. All right. First, we're going to talk about inductive reasoning. With inductive reasoning, what you do is you find a pattern in specific cases and you make a conjecture about that's going to be true all the time. It happened this time, it happened this time, it's happened this time, so we're going to make a conjecture that's going to be true all the time. That's what inductive reasoning is. So we find this in patterns. So to sketch the fourth pattern of this, we say, well, this is what happened here. Then we have four of them. Then we have six of them. So how many pieces are we going to have next? All right. And so next, what we're going to do is we have eight of them. Right? Two, four, six, eight pieces. And we're always going to shade this piece here. So there it is, one just above the horizontal segment. All right. and that's inductive reasoning. We don't know for certain, but the pattern says this is what should happen next. Right. So I want you to pause the video right now and sketch the next ones in each of these. All right. So hopefully, after you sketch those, you came up with that. And over here you should have these. My face out of the way. There it is. All right. And so this is what came next. Find the pattern and then what comes next. Make a conjecture based on that. All right. Now then, we can make a conjecture about some consecutive integers. Consecutive integers are just one right after the other, after the other, after the other. All right. And so here we go. We're going to make a conjecture about that. So first, what we have to do is come up with a pattern. So we've got to make some specific observations. All right. So we're going to just test it out. What happens with consecutive integers, the sum of any three consecutive integers. So we make a couple of them and we see if there's a pattern there. So we have 3 plus 4 plus 5 is 12. Okay, that's 4 times 3. Same with 11. 10, 11, 12, we get 11 times 3, that middle number. So we might make a conjecture that that is always going to be the case. The sum of any three consecutive integers will be 3 times that middle number, the second number. Now, then what we need to do is we need to test that. Can we find any way that this is not going to work? Can we find a counterexample? Well, generally, if we have patterns like this, a number that's going to screw it up, that would probably be a negative number. It might screw things up, right? So let's try a negative number. Negative 1, 0 plus 1 is, well, that's 0, which is 0 times 3. It still works. And we try great big, huge numbers for 100, 101, 102, and we see if that works too. So this is probably a good conjecture, probably to say. Right. And that's inductive reasoning. And what we were looking for there is a counterexample to prove that our inductive reasoning was false, prove this conjecture was false. If we can't find a counterexample to prove that it's false, then we assume it's true. Right. It only takes one counterexample to prove something false. All right. So here we have this conjecture. The sum of two numbers is always more than the greater number. All right. And here we have three examples that prove that's true. So that's how they came up with the conjecture. So we need a counterexample. All right, so if we pause the video, see if you can come up with a counterexample. All right, so hopefully you found one. If not, like I said a minute ago, things that screw these conjectures up usually is negative numbers. So let's try some negative numbers. And here we go. Negative 2 plus negative 3 is negative 5, which is not more than our greatest number, which was negative 2. So that is a counterexample that proves it false. All right. Next, we're going to talk about is deductive reasoning. Okay, move that over there. Deductive reasoning, instead of taking specific cases and making a general statement off of it, we're saying, okay, this is a law of nature, a law a defined, accepted mathematical principle. It works all the time, so it's going to work this time too. All right, it goes from the general statement and makes since this general thing is true, we know that it's going to be true for this specific case. All right. That's how deductive reasoning works. And we have two laws of logic we're going to talk about here. We have the law of detachment and the law of syllogism. The law of detachment says that if the hypothesis of a true conditional statement is true for this specific case, then the conclusion is also going to be true for this specific case. We'll talk about that in a minute. Law of syllogism. Well, that says if hypothesis P, then conclusion Q. So if P, then Q is true, and 
if it's true that if q then r is true, then we can say that if p then r. All right. Notice that we have the q shows up as the conclusion here. It's the hypothesis here. All right. And since it's the conclusion here and the hypothesis here, we can kind of cancel it out. Basically, they're saying it's a lot like the transitive property in um, mathematics and algebra. If A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. It's a lot like that. Right. So let's take a look at a couple of these. Using the law of detachment, what statement, what conclusion can we make here? All right. So if two segments have the same length, then they are congruent. That is our conditional statement. Okay, And that's a true statement. That's what it means to be congruent. Now, we know that the length of BC equals the length of that segment XY. We know that's true. And if that's true, what can we conclude? Well, we have two segments with the same length. That's true for this statement. So this is also going to be true. And so that's what we can conclude. We, since this satisfies the hypothesis, then the conclusion will also be true. Segment BC will be congruent to segment XY. Okay. So what I want you to do is look at the second one here and see if you can include anything using the law of attachment. So pause the video, read that, see what you think. Okay, so hopefully you notice here, so if your parents let you borrow the car, then you're going to go to your movies. Right? This says you're going to movies with your friend. Can you conclude that your parents let you borrow the car? No, you can't, because you might have got a ride. Maybe you walked. Maybe you took the car without asking. You don't know. All right. The hypothesis is not true here. The law of detachment only works if the hypothesis of our original statement is true, which it's not. And so we can't conclude anything. We don't know how you got to the movies. All right. We just know that you went. All right. So the hypothesis has to be true. That's the important thing on the law of detachment. Law of syllogism. Uh, so what we're going to do here is take these two conditional statements and then combine them into one statement. Uh, so here it says that if x squared is greater than 25, then x squared is going to be greater than 20. Right? And our second one says that if x is greater than 5, then x squared is greater than 25. Can we put these together and make one combined statement? That's what it's looking for. And on this, since... We have the hypothesis here and the conclusion here are the same, then yes, we can. And we can put this together and say that if x is greater than 5, then x is greater, the x squared is greater than 20. Uh, so that works. And that's how the law of syllogism works. It takes two conditional statements and says if these two are the same, the hypothesis here and the conclusion here are the same, then we can put this together into one new conditional statement. So, take a look at B. Pause the video, see if you can come up with a new statement for part B. Alright, so here we go. If a polygon is regular, then all the angles in the interior are congruent. If a polygon is regular, then all the sides are congruent. Can we put these together? Alright. Well, we do have stuff that's the same. We have a polygon is regular and a polygon is regular. I'm terrible at drawing with a mouse. But can we put these together? Well, as we saw here, the hypothesis has to match up with the conclusion. But in part B here, uh, we have a hypothesis and a hypothesis. We don't have a hypothesis matching up with the conclusion. So... What we have here is that we can't use the law of syllogism. It doesn't work. All right. So that's no good. All right. So in summary, inductive reasoning, what we're doing is we're taking a few specific examples to make a general statement about everything. All right. Deductive reasoning says, okay, we're going to say, take something we know is true all the time, and so we can make a conclusion about this specific case. Okay, Law of detachment, if the hypothesis of a general statement is true for a specific case, then the conclusion is also going to be true for the specific case. And with the law of syllogism, where that works is if P then Q and if Q then R are 
both true statements, then we can put that together and say if P, then R. All right. And the important thing to know there is that it has to be the conclusion and the hypothesis on these two statements have to be the same. All right. And that is inductive and deductive reasoning.